Good evening, I'm Noel Okel and you are watching Perspectives Daily, up next. Yesterday on Perspectives, we had a preview of the Canadian Catholic Bishop's official response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, a report that documented 94 calls to action to redress the legacy of abuse suffered by First Nations children in Indian residential schools between 1870 to 1996, which had affected over 150,000 Aboriginal children. Bishop Donald Bolin, the chairman of the Justice and Peace Commission for the CCCB spoke candidly about what the process has been for the Catholic Church to respond and to some of the more challenging areas for the Catholic Church going forward. Bishop Boland, what was the process for the Catholic Church in responding to the TRC's many calls to action? When the calls to action were first made public uh, at the TRC's final event uh, in June of last year, uh, the Justice and Peace Commission of the Bishops Conference was asked to, to study the calls to action, in particular those addressed to the churches and the churches involved in residential schools. In September at our Bishops Plenary Assembly, we led a discussion and bishops were very engaged in that discussion uh, about the calls to action. And uh, then the Justice and Peace Commission was asked to do some drafting. And uh, we have produced uh, a draft of these two texts that were published yesterday then engaged in an extensive process of consultation with Indigenous people and uh, with the Canadian Catholic Aboriginal Council. Uh, after a lengthy process, uh, the Bishops Conference brought together uh, representatives of the, the Canadian Catholic Aboriginal Council, the Canadian Religious Conference, representing the various religious communities in the country, many of whom were involved in residential schools, and the uh, Canadian Catholic Organization for Development and Peace chaired by the president of the Bishops Conference, Bishop Doug Crosby, with representatives from the Justice and Peace Commission. We discussed this document, uh, these documents, we went over them carefully, made changes, and uh, now the documents have been signed by all of these groups, which is really a new development for the Bishops Conference, a text not only, uh, not only put out by the conference or a particular commission, but by really a, a group that represents the Catholic Church in Canada. Can you comment on some of the areas where the Catholic Church will be most challenged by this report? Well, I think, uh, like all Canadians, the, the biggest challenge is how to, uh, how to be changed by this process. Uh, there's a transformation invited of us. So how do we learn to, to walk the talk? The calls to action in some instances are very specific. And how do we, uh, how do we find a new way of walking with Indigenous people? How do we take this which we have learned because the residential school, the TRC process has really taken us to school, right? So how do we learn to uh, reach out to Indigenous people more and build stronger relationships? Uh, we're at the beginning of a, a big learning curve. Secondly, I, th I think we need to learn to tell our history in a, in a different way and in a much more truthful way. Last summer I had an experience which, uh, which really brought this home to me. I was touring with a, a cultural anthropologist and I asked him, where is the oldest trace of human settlement in what is now Saskatchewan? And he indicated a, a site between the towns of Aneroid and Pontex. And uh, it was disarming because that site is less than half an hour from the farm where I grew up. And yet I knew nothing of it. And my telling of of the history of that region really began with the arrival of my great-grandparents and my grandparents and their settling of the land. That, that's such a, a limited and restrictive narrowing version of our history. So we need to tell our history in a new way, but that history needs to include and treat well the suffering of Indigenous people, the story of the Indian Act, uh, the story of residential schools, uh, the way in which the coming of European settlers of immigrants created profound challenges for indigenous people and their way of life. Another challenge that the, the Catholic Church faces is how to hold together uh, a deep understanding that the residential school system was flawed, that there were tragic things that happened there, and that the, the larger, larger legacy uh, of the schools is, is really a difficult legacy with the, the reality that there were lay people, 
women and men, religious and priests, who, who did serve there generously and offer themselves and their sacrifices were, were genuine and, and their care for the students was genuine. How do we hold those two together? The TRC final report also speaks of that and, and grapples with it and talks about how difficult reconciliation is when we listen faithfully to both, both those strands. We don't want to throw under the bus all of the people who served in those schools, but at the same time, we don't want to adopt a defensive posture, and we want to hear deeply the pain and suffering of Indigenous people in order to, to respond. So that's a, that's a big challenge. The other area I would say uh, that we face here in Saskatoon, and in, I'm sure in many other places as a challenge, is how to walk with our Indigenous brothers and sisters who are Catholic and who want to hold on to something of their spiritual traditions at the same time live their lives as Catholics deeply. So how do we listen and learn to them to engage in a dialogue and to, to think through where it's appropriate in our, in our worship to include, uh, for instance, a, a smudge or praying in the four directions, uh, where to include elements of indigenous spirituality that are completely consistent with, with our Catholic faith and our Catholic worship. So there's a lot of discussion to be had there. And without a doubt, the final TRC report is a difficult report to get through simply because it invokes a lot of emotion and clearly spells out many action items. Are there any final pieces of information or messages that you'd like to pass on to our viewers? I guess I'd, I'd really like to encourage Catholics in this country to engage with the TRC's document. Um, we don't have it as a specific uh, list uh, item on the, on the list of recommendations or possible actions, but I know I, it's been deeply moving for me to take time to, to read not only the calls to action, but to read large segments of the TRC's final report. It's, a, it's an incredibly written document. This is a landmark moment in Canadian history. We're dealing with something and it's not only the residential schools, although that, that's enough for us to deal with, but it's, it's the India, Indian Act. It's a, it's a whole historical relationship between the settlers, the immigrants who came to Canada, and the indigenous people who lived here. And we're called to deal with that history now in a way that we haven't done to this point. And I think the TRC's final report is such an exceptional document. There are moments of frustration when you, when you read it and moment of, moments of pain, moment of suffering, but uh, I think taking the time, read volume six if you don't have time to read the entire, uh, uh, entire final report. It's, uh, it's an invitation to change, it's an invitation to a deeper engagement, and I believe the Holy Spirit is, is in this process, in this invitation to us as church. So that would be my, my final word of encouragement. We thank you very much, Bishop Bowen, for helping to bring clarity and perspectives to this rather difficult report. Now, you can watch the entire interview with Bishop Bowen on our blog site listed below, or you can read the entire TRC reports at nctr.ca. So now we are out of time for perspectives to today. From all of us here at the Salt and Light Studios, we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.